Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for the 5% series for Game Week 28. The idea being if you follow these instructions, you're hopefully finishing the top 5% globally, which means you'll do all right in your mini leagues. Now it's a double game week this week. Next week there are 12 teams I think it is not playing, but we don't care because we're going to free hit next week. Then shortly after that we're wildcard, and then game week 34 or 37, which should be double game weeks, that's when you'll be using your bench boost if you still got it. So we should be all right. Even if your rank is below 2 million mark, you've still got a reasonably good chance of finishing top 5%. So we're going to start by looking quickly at what happened last game week and then what our plans are for this game week 28. Let's start by looking at the goalkeepers. The expensive keepers, three of them did all right. So that's nice. Of the cheaper keepers, Ariel and Dubravka got seven. And I think they're probably the most popular keepers in the game. But that's just because they're so cheap. For the defenders, the more expensive defenders, the three Arsenal boys did well. As for the cheaper defenders, Bradley 8, Doughty 5, and that's all. For the expensive midfielders, Foden 15, Odegaard 10, Saka 7, Sun 7, that was nice, Fernandes 5. The cheaper midfielders, Martinelli 11, Gordon 8, so some nice returns there. And the cheapest midfielders, Palmer 5, Ward Prowse 5. Ward Prowse is funny, funny as in he's been permanently orange, or at least orange for a long time in the system, as in, yeah, you can sell him if you like. And I think he's actually the 10th highest scoring midfielder. He just ticks along and every now and then gets something. As for the expensive forwards, Watkins 13, Haaland 6, Darwin 5. For the cheaper forwards, Munes we introduced last week, 11, Morris 8, Alvarez 4. Now coming up to this current game week, game week 28, we're going to look at all the players and I'm going to tell you what I think of them. So Becker's injured. I've been holding on to Becker all this time just because I've always had other things to do. I've sold Becker already and I'm buying in a keeper I'm going to show you in a minute. So Becker's absolutely sellable. It might be another month before he's back fit and playing. Edison, he's had his good run at games. You can sell him if you want to, but you actually don't have to. He might keep some clean sheets, but next two games that we're going to play him is Liverpool and Arsenal. So I think it's worth taking a hit if you've got Edison to bring in someone I'll show you in a minute. Ray is not even playing this week. He plays for Arsenal, but Arsenal playing Brentford and Ray is actually a Brentford player, so he can't play. Sanchez is, he's not injured, but he's not playing. He seems to be second choice. So if you've got any of these expensive keepers, it's possibly worth taking a hit to sell them this week. You don't have to, but you could do. Onana's all right. Leno's okay. So Neto, I sold Becker to get in Neto. So Neto's the Bournemouth keeper. A home game against Sheffield United and a home game against Luton. He could easily get more than four points than any of the other keepers on the screen here. So it's absolutely fine to go for Neto. You don't have to. Obviously you don't have to. But he's a should be a good keeper this week. And then Pickford away to Man United. He's all right. I like Pickford. For the cheaper keepers, Kaminsky's got a double game week this week. But it's a way to Palace and a way to Bournemouth. It's absolutely feasible Luton won't get a clean sheet. So if you've got him, he's moderately cheap. He's fine to play. Definitely don't take a four-point hit to get in Neto if you've got Kaminsky. Kaminsky's all right. And then Flecken, probably not going to keep a clean sheet away to Arsenal. Johnson home to Luton, may get a clean sheet. Ariola home to Burnley, fair chance of a clean sheet there, I'd say. Dubravka away to Chelsea. Probably not, but they are defensively getting a bit better. Turner doesn't play. For their defenders, their expensive defenders, Trent is still injured. And if you've still got him and you can afford to keep hold of him, that's fine till he's back, which may be one or two game weeks time. But if you want to sell him to free up some funds to do something else, that's fine as well. Trippier. So I've got Trippier. I've, I'm playing him this week or he's on my bench. He's injured. He's probably not going to play now that I've said I'm playing him. But I'm in no rush to sell him. I'm not intending to sell him just now. If you want to move him on for somebody else, that's fine. But I don't know if there's anything worth doing this week with Trippier unless you need to free up some funds. Saliba's generally worth getting. Home to Brentford this week. We don't care about next week's with free hitting. Week after that, away to Man City. But after that, the fixtures are pretty good. Pedro Porro. I think he's on a 50% chance of playing according to the official site. If he plays this week, that's fine. But he may not be back for a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks, so we don't know. 
So if you've got Poe and you want to sell him, that's okay. Because next week, remember, we're free hitting. White's all right. Arsenal defender. Walker. Walker's a very good player. Very quick. Plays for a very good side. But he doesn't play every week, which is a bit frustrating. If we played every week, he'd generally be white or green. But because he doesn't, he's just, just a bit of a minutes risk there. Gabriel's good defender worth having. For the cheaper defenders, Estupanam, uh, he's going to be out of the system next week if he doesn't do anything amazing. And yet this week, I'm probably going to have to rely on him myself. He's last on my bench and he's probably going to come in. Uh, Udogi's good, uh, good player to have. Nice fixtures coming up. So Alfie Doughty, nice attacking defender. 4.7. He's got two fixtures this game week. He's worth having. So if you've got nothing else to do and you had, for example, Estupanan and you don't have... Doughty you just buy Doughty and that'd be a good move Colwell's all right nice and cheap so Senesi I've held on to him for a couple of months now I think and he got injured last game and he's got a beautiful double game week this week from what I've seen it looks like he's probably going to be out for a month so he's probably not going to play so he's absolutely fine to sell if you wanted to sell him for Alfie Doughty that's all right if Senesi was playing then he would be getting good score but he's not so, so he's kind of irrelevant. Conter's back from injury. He's okay. I wouldn't be buying him. You don't have to sell him. Bradley, so he's playing Man City this week. And by the time he's got his next game, which I think's the end of this month, Trent may be back and he may not get any more time. So Bradley's a very good player, but not worth having apart from the fact he's 4.1 million. So it does free up funds. If you've got him, he's fine to keep. There's probably other moves you'd rather make this week. So don't be frightened about playing him. Um, but don't be buying him now. As for the expensive midfielders, Salah's back. He played tonight in Europe for a little bit. So that was nice. He came on. But the next game is home to Man City. He could easily get 10 or more points in that. But it is going to be one of their more difficult games. So if you've got him, great. If you haven't got him, it's not worth taking hits to bring him in this game week. De Bruyne, he's been a bit disappointing with his FPL returns. Excellent player, but they're playing Liverpool this week. We're free hitting next week. Week after that, they're playing Arsenal. So if you want to move some players around, get in a different midfielder, free up some funds, and you have De Bruyne, it's okay to move him on. Son is a good midfielder. The next several weeks, Tottenham have some nice fixtures. Saka's still a good midfielder. He went off half-time in the last game feeling ill. But he'd already got two assists by that point. And the reports I've seen today from Arteta is that he's fit and expected to play Brentford at the weekend. So he's a very good midfielder to have. Odegaard's another good midfielder. Fernandez, still like Fernandez. <laughs> They're at home to Everton this week. He might do well. Foden, although he's playing Liverpool and then Arsenal in the next two games, he's such an excellent midfielder, he could still get returned in both of those. For the mid price midfielders, Bowen's got some nice fixtures coming up. Madison, because he's still not at his absolute best yet, it seems. I've not made him green, but he's a perfectly good player. Martinelli's a good player. So Richarlison's flagged as injured, and it looks like, like most people are expecting him to not play this week. And given that this game week's a double, you want to try and get 11 good players out and some doublers in there. So if you're relying on Richarlison, it's fine to sell him this week. But if he was going to sit on your bench anyway... You can keep hold of him for now. If he's going to be on your bench, it's not worth taking a minus four to move him on. But if you're relying on him, it probably is worth taking a hit to move him on. Sterling's all right. But he's sellable if you want to free up a space. Gordon, very good player. Away to Chelsea this week. He doesn't do anywhere near as well away from home as at home. But Chelsea don't have a great defence. Could be a nil-nil, but equally, if it was a 3-3, no one would be that surprised. The cheap midfielders, Ward Prowse, as always, is sellable if you want to free up a space. If you want to keep playing him, that's fine. He ticks along. Neto's cheap. He went off injured. I think he's given a 75% chance of playing this game weekend. If he does, at home to Fulham, that's a good fixture. But so many good players to have at the moment. If I had Neto, I'd be all right to keep him actually for this game week, given that you should be wildcarding soon anyway. Palmer, very good midfielder, worth having. Gibbs White, same price as Palmer. Palmer's much better, but Gibbs White is okay. He Chan is injured. We don't know how long for. I suspect it could be a few weeks. 
So it's absolutely fine to sell He Chan if you got him. So Barkley, he's green because he's got a double game week this week. And then next week we're going to be free hitting. So given that we're probably going to wild card either game week 30, 31, maybe as late as 32, any players you pick up now, like Barkley, if you don't want them long term, that's fine because we can wild card them out of your team. Now he may only get four or five points this double game week, but he may, may get eight or ten. I mean, he may get lots of scores, but realistically, somewhere between five and ten points for Barkley seems quite possible. Garnacho's a good player, but he's not as good when Hoyland's injured and Hoyland's injured. As for the forwards, Haaland isn't green because the next two games are Liverpool and Arsenal, but he's a very, very good player. I've seen some people online saying they're going to sell him to get in Morris. I think that's crazy, but if you want to do that, you could do that. Because we'd be wildcarding soon to bring him back in. The trouble is for me, he's gone up 0.6 million since I bought him. So if I sell him and bring him back, it's going to probably cost me 0.2 or 0.3 million. And for me, it's not worth it. And Harlan can score against anyone. Watkins is green because the fixtures are good. And he just ticks along and keeps getting points. Tony, he's all right. Jesus, if he was playing, he was all right. So... I don't know if he's going to play, basically. He came on, I think, for maybe 28 minutes last game week. I wouldn't be buying Jesus. If you've got him, you don't need to be desperate to sell him. But there are definitely better forward options at the moment. Darwin, very good player. Lots of fun to own. But they're playing Man City. So Solanke, he's going to be the most captain player probably this game week, assuming he's still fit. Two great fixtures. Sheffield United and Luton. Absolutely worth getting. If you've got Tony, it's probably worth swapping Tony for Solanke this game week. Or if you've got Jesus or Darwin, any of those for Solanke is probably worth doing unless you've got loads of money saved up in them. But I don't suppose you would have money in any of those particularly. Hoyland's injured. When he's back, he's going to be good. It's, if you can move him on, if you've got him and you want to move him on for like Solanke, that's fine. For the cheaper forwards, Alvarez, when he plays, he's good. It's a light bit of a minute's risk at the moment, and there's probably at least three strikers better than him this week. Morris, double game week. He could easily get somewhere between 7 and 12 points this game week. No one would be surprised at that. So he's worth having. Eddie Bio, unfortunately, looks like he's still going to be injured this game week, so he's sellable. Molpe's nice and cheap. So I got Munitz here. He's nice and cheap, and he's an enabler, so you may want to make certain moves and you're a bit short of cash, in which case you can swap one of your forwards for Muntz, and he's a good player. And then Archers doesn't seem to play much, and he, but he's only 4.2, so he's an enabler. So the benching order, this is my suggestion for the benching order. You're going to have two of these keepers. The first one you see sits on your bench, which means you're playing the other one. So these first four, Raya, Becker, Turner, Sanchez, almost certainly not playing this game week. And then we have Flecken, then it's Edison, Pickford, Dubravka, Leno, Johnston, Onana, Ariola, Kaminsky, and Neto. So Neto is an excellent choice this week if you've got him. Now I know if you look at any of the sites that predict scores, they won't have them in this order, but <laughs> this is the order I'm recommending. As for the other players, I'm going to go through the other players now. Apart from ones that are injured, all the players that I'm going to show on the captain's page, which is the next page. So the first player you see you've got, I'm suggesting you go to position three on your bench, the next player position two, and the last player position one. So Consa, Walker, Mopé, Colwell, Estupanan, Gibbs White, Bradley, Neto, the Wolves player Neto, Porro, Udogi, Jesus, Alvarez, Tony, Darwin, Munez, Garnacho, Fernandez, Sterling, Ward Prowse, Trippier, Madison, Gordon, Martinelli, Palmer. De Bruyne, Bowen, Sun, Barkley, White, Saliba, Gabriel, Odegaard, Senesi, Doughty, Foden and Saka. Now I've got Senesi up high and he's almost certainly not going to play. But just in case he did happen to play, then even for one game, he's got a reasonable chance of a clean sheet. And if he happened to play both games, which is extremely unlikely, then he's obviously a very good player to have. I'm also where I've got the Arsenal boys and Foden higher than Barkley, who's got two game weeks. But I think that's absolutely right. I would play any of those above Barkley that I've got up there. 
As for the captain choice, I think Solanke is obviously going to be the most highly captain player this week among engaged managers. He's a very good choice. If you've got Solanke, he's worth captaining. If you've still got your triple captain chip and you want to play it on him, that's fine. There'll be a good number of managers that have that kept their chip that will be playing it this week. Morris is another good choice for captain. Probably not as good as Solanke, but perfectly good captain's choice. And then maybe even Neto, a chance of two clean sheets. He could get 12 points, make it a captain. That's 24. Of course, he could get two points. So Solanke and Morris have got a higher ceiling. That is, there's, they've both got more chance of exceeding 12 points or 14 points than Neto have. But Neto is still a good choice this week if you didn't have Solanke or Morris. As for me, I've currently got my captain's hat on Solanke and Neto's my vice captain. Harlan's a perfectly good choice. He can score against anyone. Salah, if you've got Salah and none of these other four, it's right to captain Salah. He might do something at home to Man City. And Watkins, he's always good. He's good all the time. As for the background picture, when I'm getting all these videos together, and it, it takes me hours to get this information together and think about how to present it and what the order should be, etc. And I have music playing. And I listen to music from the 50s right up to modern times. And when I was thinking what to do for the background, I think it was actually ABBA playing. So I thought, if you went into a playing field at the weekend in the 1970s, this is exactly what it would look like. This is how people looked in the 70s when they used to play football. I know most of you weren't alive in the 70s, but I expect your parents were. <laughs> but there we have it. That's suggestion for Game Week 28. And if you're inside the top 2.5 million rank, I think you're still going to be all right. Very good chance of still finishing in the top 5%. Thank you very much for watching. As always, I'll try and respond to any comments down below. <laughs> have a good Game Week. Bye. <laughs>